Ladies and gentlemen, Norma Alvarez. Thank you, Abud, for that very nice welcome. It's my privilege and with great pleasure, I welcome you all to this IFA conference. It's so wonderful to see so many people already gathered out of the 300 odd delegates. I'm told that we have crossed 200 already at the first session. There are more than 300 expected. So we have a full house. And so we started, I think, bang on time. How many of you have attended a previous IFA? That's a good, that's a good number, that's a good number. Uh, I, I needed to ask because I wanted to know whether I needed to introduce FIAPO and IFA or whether everybody had, had been here before. But um, this is the fourth IFA and every time we hold it, which is biennially, once every two years, two and a half years, it seems to get bigger and better. IFA is organized for the same reason as FIAPO was set up. To bring activists and NGOs together to be able to talk about issues on animal welfare, to set higher goals for ourselves, to be able to sit back and assess our achievements, whatever we think we have achieved, and not just to applaud that we achieved certain things, but to look at the factors responsible for them. Why did we succeed in some places? What did we do right which helped us to succeed? To also ponder over our failures. There are many things many areas where we have started working and we still find there are increasing cruelties. Experimentation on animals, for one. The experimental homes, the boxes in which the mice are kept, the cages in which the monkeys are kept, get better. Maybe there is water. But the kind of experiments done on them are intense in cruelty. So we seem to sh be sharpening our tools for cruelty, at least as so far as experimentation goes. We also want to look at new problems that are arising. Resident welfare associations I see as one. Five years ago, two years ago, you hardly ever heard of so many. But people are getting up all over the place saying, well, this is my space, this is my gated community, I don't want dogs here. Uh, others are getting up to say, no, you can't have pets. What is happening? So these are new problems that we are to tackle. And we need to collectively find ways in order to deal with them. Why do I say collectively? Can we not do it alone? Yes, we can. Yes, we do. But there are some advantages in collectively approaching subjects like animal protection, animal welfare. For one, there is strength in numbers. I don't need to explain that. I don't need to say it twice. We all know that when as a group we go into a situation, we find courage, we find strength, even if we are diffident to start with. There is strength in diversity. Different animal welfare Persons and organizations bring different skills and different talents to an animal welfare situation. We are simultaneously able to tackle a difficult animal problem in a number of areas if we are collective. We can handle things in Andhra Pradesh and we can handle things in Delhi and we can handle things in Chennai simultaneously if we work together. And we can share tasks. After all, every situation, every problem requires a number of different things to be done. And if we are together collectively, we can share these jobs. There is also strength in knowing that there is someone to catch, to catch you if you fail, if you fall, not fail, if you fall, there is a backup. And very important, there is someone to take on the baton. 
just as in a relay team, you hand it over and when your strength is almost out, you give it to the next person who starts with a vigor. If you are collective, if we are collective, there is someone to carry it forward. Because I do think that many things that we want, we may not achieve in our lifetime. Animal rights, for example, we're nowhere near it as yet. We did have a good Supreme Court judgment which spoke of animal rights, spoke, opened a window, but we are yet to get in the door on that front. We're still battling cruelties to a large extent. We're still finding people who question even dignity for animals, much less rights. So that is going to take some time to achieve, and we need to know that there are people to carry on after us. And that is why a decade ago, 2007 to be exact, the idea of a federation took place. It happened after the first Asia for Animal Conference held in Chennai, hosted by Dr. Chini Krishna of Blue Cross of India, a grand function which took place in India pursuant to AFAs which were held in other parts of Asia earlier. In fact, IFA, in some sense, and at least in the name, draws inspiration from Asia for Animals. We are India for Animals. Many of us, including me perhaps, thought at that time that a federation was impossible or difficult, very difficult. After all, NGOs fight like cats and dogs in not just animal welfare, but I've been a lawyer for 25 odd years, and I always watch and see how our opponents, the mining companies, the industrialists, the people who want to do development, there is no chink in their armor. They stand at a solid wall, even if they come from different companies. But NGOs, we take our differences to the press at the first opportunity, even a slight disagreement, and on principle we want to show that something is wrong somewhere. So we open ourselves up to the other side very frequently. But still, I think we, animal people, know that it's a myth that cats and dogs will always fight. We know that cats and dogs do agree. We have so many examples of animal mothers who take care of other offspring. So that is not necessarily true. And therefore we thought, let us put together people who care for dogs and cats and cattle and birds and elephants and myriads of animals, donkeys and so on, and see if we can create a Garden of Eden. Another problem when setting up FIAPO was, or setting up the Federation, which was eventually named Federation of Indian Animal Protection Organizations, Another problem that we had, or another issue was, how to find common goals. How will we bring together animal welfare organizations? What are we going to say that we will do that will attract them? Because everyone is not interested in everything. Everyone also has different ideas of what animal welfare should be. And to take the lowest common denominator, something that every single person will agree on, is not very edifying at all. We have to set standards. We have to set our sights on something. What would we do? These were initial questions that engaged us for nearly three years before the Federation came into existence in that is, FIAPO came into existence in 2010, when we finally got ourselves registered. I think it took a lot of faith, trust, courage, and belief in the idea. We really had no well-formed idea of what we would do, but we believed that we were right. We had trust, hope, faith in this. And I would like to recall for you the names of those who were the founder trustees of FIAPO, who 
said, yes, I will put my signature to this on behalf of my organization. Chini Krishna of Blue Cross of India, Erika Abrams of Animal Aid Unlimited. Chini is here, Erika is here. I think you'll know them well. From Cupa, we had Sheila Gupte. I think I got a surname right. Sheila Gupte. Sheila Rao, sorry. Uh, Sheila and Suparna, who sometimes stood in. There was Amla Akineni of Blue Cross of Hyderabad, Nandita Shah of Sharan. I think Nandita is having a session here. Abod Aras, our ever ready MC, whom we call upon every time, of Welfare of Stray Dogs and myself, People for Animals Goa. Not to forget Arpan Sharma, the ex one of our two executive directors who was there from the very beginning telephoning, persuading us to come and meet and, you know, get this idea put together. Down the road, we met a gentleman called Mr. Sudhir Amembal. Not many will know of him. He has been out of India for 40 years. He is now in Mexico. His heart was with animal welfare. He met us and counted us at an AFA, Asia for Animals in Singapore, I think, and expressed an interest in helping out. And we got two wonderful ideas from him. One was the idea of rotating trustees, which is really in line with the concept of a federation. Because a federation means that everybody takes responsibility, everybody owns the organization. There are not just, it's not an NGO alone with its own directives, but NGOs who form the federation shape its ideas, shape its programs, and carry it on. They take ownership of this organization. And if the federation was to remain in the hands of the original trustees alone, then we would, the few of us would become owners of that and the others would participate. But rotating trustees gave an idea that different persons at different points of time with different time periods can help the federation shape its direction, shape its movement, and so on. The second good idea that he gave us was, why don't you look beyond animal activists to be members of, to, be, to, to belong in some way and shape FIAPO in some way? And he recommended, he, he didn't have names, but he recommended that we look beyond animal activists, outright activists. We did that, and we found persons who are very busy in their own lives elsewhere, but who have a very, very strong commitment to animal welfare. And these are persons who are willing to, well, put their money where their mouth is. They are persons who are willing to open doors for us, to introduce us to other places. They are persons who are willing to share their knowledge and expertise with us. With us. They gave us one, one insight, which is, well, some of them were business persons, and they said, treat animal protection as a business, as something where you are really committed to it. It's not a, it's not a part-time occupation. It is something where you have an intensity of desire to succeed. You have fervor, you have sharp-sightedness, you know to seize the opportunity, you're willing to mold, you're willing to change, you're willing to plan. These are all business ideals. Why don't you incorporate them as part of your federation? Because then you will push, you will drive, because you want to succeed. And I'm really grateful to these persons, and I named three of them who are still with FIAPO. They are trustees of FIAPO. One is Mr. D.R. Mehta of Jaipur Foot. I don't know if he's here. <laughs> Jaipur Foot, you might know, is the one which has created the prosthetic for persons who lose their limbs. Now, you don't associate him with animal welfare, but he has been amazing. He's given us so much of time and so much of uh, inputs into our program. The other is Mr. Mofatraj Munoth of Kalpat Kalpataru. It's a business uh, concern in Mumbai which is in real estate. He is being, IFA being in Mumbai, he has really gone, 
the extra length to help us to get this function going. And another to the gentleman from Chennai, Mr. Sugalchan Jain. These are hardcore businessmen in some sense, but they do believe in animal welfare. And they have been friends with us for a long time. And we think that expanding the animal welfare, animal protection idea means taking in others. And that is why at this, animal, at this IFA conference, we have as our keynote speaker, Dr. Vandana Shiva, not connected with the animal welfare movement at all, but outstanding in environmentalism. And we want to see and we want to find a way to make animal welfare part of mainstream concerns. 25 years ago, if you spoke ecology, if you spoke environmentalism, critics would say, and there were many, oh, you want us to go back to the Stone Age. Oh, we are just beginning to develop and you want to take us back. Oh, you don't want us to progress and be competitive. Today, will anybody say, if you speak the word environment, will they say that, oh, no, 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 forget it. We've got to run uh, the economy? No. Environment has become part of economy, part of life. They call it sustainable development, but environment has a major role. Similarly, animal welfare must become part of mainstream. Animals are like us. They are no different. They only speak a different language. They are mothers. They are children. They are fathers. They care, they hurt, they suffer, they cry, they agonize, they laugh, they are glad, they are, they are joyful. What more do you want? But this, does, this is not known elsewhere. Animals are seen as animals, different from humans. And we want this message to go out, and that is why we are moving. We have moved, at least for this conference, we have moved to say, let us bring others into the fold. Let us see how we can link up with others so that we can push the animal protection and the animal welfare agenda forward. So, what have we, where are my notes? Okay, so, what have we achieved so far? Uh, what has FIAPO achieved? FIAPO is a body of and by Indian, NG Indian NGOs, Indian animal protection organizations. What have we achieved? And secondly, where is the animal protection movement headed? Well, as far as FIAPO goes, I think you are the best judge as to whether FIAPO has made any difference to the Indian NGOs. Have we made a difference? It's really for you to say we have been around as, in, as formally as an organization for the past five or six years, informally for the past eight years or so. Have we made a difference? Have we in any way enhanced the quality of activism in this country? I will just list a few achievements, not for self-glory, we are too young to be boasting about anything, but mainly in case you are not aware of what has happened in these past years, but more important to see whether, for, for you to see whether you want to get involved in any way with FIAPO as an NGO. For one thing, our campaign to free animals from circuses. This is an ongoing effort. It's not a new idea. Animal welfare organizations have been uh, appalled at circuses and made efforts when the circus comes to town. Sometimes activists have gone to the circus, checked the animals, fed them, brought a doctor, treated them, written to the press, protested. Then the circus finishes in a month or in two weeks if you're strong enough to push them out. They go elsewhere and the problem ends for that particular area. You don't follow the circus into the next town and start running after them there. You don't do it because you can't do it. So finding that a large number of animal welfare organizations were concerned about circuses 
and that we also believed that the time to end the use of animals in circuses was, had come. Circuses in many parts of the world are completely human and performing well and doing well as well. We decided, FIAPO decided, to take it up as a campaign. Now, a campaign means that you have to have systematic steps. You simply just can't go and protest, shout, 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 then it goes, that's the end of it. No. You've got to find a way to close it down completely and permanently. So we found, for instance, that you needed to have inspections because they are bound to be violating some of the conditions on which they were allowed to keep animals. And after you have inspections, you have to serve a show cause notice. You've got to give them a hearing and then you can have an order passed. And who can do this? Two authorities, Animal Welfare Board of India and Central Zoo Authority. So we worked on trying to ensure that these authorities did these inspections because much as your inspection as an, as an NGO might be right, it will not be taken seriously until there is a directive which comes from a recognized Indian authority. So this took time, but we managed to do a lot of these, uh, managed to ensure that a lot of inspections were done and that notices were issued and so on. Then again, there's the question, all right, you go to a circus is happening, you uh, get there, you find that it is violating, you file a case, you get a closure order, what do you do with the animals? You suddenly have two elephants, three horses, some 15 odd dogs, birds, all kinds of creatures on your hand, where are you going to put them? You can't, you can't execute an action if you don't know where you are going with it. This is where networking helped. Because there is an organization, let us say, in Mathura, and there's an organization in Bangalore who will take the elephants. So you contact them. Find out how to get them transported. So that when you go to the district court, you can say, yes, we have proper facilities for keeping these animals. You find NGOs who will keep the dogs. You find somebody else who can take in the goats and the cattle or whatever it is. It required a lot of coordination, a lot of planned strategy, a lot of thinking in advance, a lot of impromptu thinking as the situation ari arises or arose, because obviously the circus owner will also go to court and get, try to get a stay, and so on and, and so forth. And this is a good example of networking. Because in the end, we have rescued I don't know how many, 120 animals maybe, or maybe more, from several circuses. I don't have the numbers, but there is a session at which uh, this information will be conveyed. We rescued animals. We attended court cases. We got notices issued. We got orders passed. We got them rehomed. We got the animals kept in places, not because of FIAPO, but because of the organizations that came when FIAPO sent a message out. These are all organizations, some of whom are our members, but some of whom are on the ground in places like Nasik and Pune and Mumbai and South India, wherever it is, who said, okay, I'm in, count me in, I'm part of this exercise for this particular place. This is where an organization like FIAPO could play a role and did play a role. Another example that I would like to give you of what we consider success and again an ongoing activity is a very energizing campaign called Living Free. Now Living Free is a totally different cup of tea. It's, it's an idea where we said we will engage with the public at random and try to convince them about food eating habits so that they can consume less animal products. What is the standard that we will set? Will it be vegetarianism or veganism? No, we'll go with the flow. If somebody is willing to give you an inch, you will not say, I don't want your inch, I want a whole mile. No, you will take the inch because from the inch we can grow. So we went, we means volunteers, activists, living free activists they were called. They, we went to different cities different places and in the past two years or three years we have covered not covered we have been to over 20 cities and we have 
had direct contact with three, over three lakh persons, individually saying, we want to persuade you to reduce animal consumption. We are now at a little advanced stage. We have a little tablet, and we set it up on the street, and we ask people, come and view it. It takes only two minutes, or it takes three minutes. It's such very short films showing animal cruelty. We are much like salesperson. We get rebuffed sometimes. People say, oh, no, 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 you're a bunch of nutcases. We don't want to watch all your stuff. Somebody says, okay, but you know, I don't think so. I'll think about it. Okay, but you're making a headway. Salespersons get rebuffed many times. We can take a no, but we won't give up. We go ahead. And what we did is we also, this Living Free campaign has a kind of domino effect because you encounter persons who say, hey, I can do this, I'll do this. Can you give me some equipment? Can you give me some leaflets? Can you give me a tablet? I'll conduct it in my school or in my college. I'll go to the mall. I'll do it here. So it's a completely random exercise. And I don't know how we are going to judge the results, but we make the effort. And we have something like 180 to 200 now leaders in the, free, in the living free movement, which means they are doing it, which means they will find persons who will then take it forward from there. So that's a kind of domino effect, and it's a very good example of one of our objectives, FIAPO's objectives, which is building a movement. We want people to say, yeah, animals, yes, I know about it. Yes, I know. I, I might not be completely agreeable with everything, but yes, I recognize the words. I know what is cruelty. I know what maybe meat does. I know what the, con uh, the effects of using animal wealth, uh, animals in food. Um, a third, a third, well, I don't hate to use the word success, but a third endeavor of ours has been to try to formulate on the road, in practice, low-cost methodologies and models for generating an animal protection movement. I'll give you two examples. It sounds very theoretical, but what we did is this. Just a moment. In the city, in the city of Varanasi, for instance, there was not a single animal welfare organization there were a lot of dogs. They were in bad condition, shabby, with injuries, and so on. And there were persons who were concerned about it, but there was no animal welfare organization. What to do? How to do? So we set up, through one of our, uh, our staff who went there, we started a first aid program. Now, nobody will grudge you a first aid program, because what are you doing? You are attending to an animal on the street, applying a little medication, putting some treatment, it's got ticks, whatever, attending to it and letting it go. Nobody objects to a thing like that normally. From there, we moved on to find out that there was one rundown shelter. It was there long ago, God knows who set it up, but it was not functioning. We got together with the municipality, asked them a little bit of assistance, told them about several things that we can do, what can we do, we got some aid, some things into it. And today, we have the shelter running. We persuaded the municipality to, set, to start an ABC program. The first aid program still runs. Shopkeepers, people on the street uh, know about it. They call up, they have a number, they call in case there are difficulties. You built up a community of persons, and you started a concern for animal protection where there was none. This is a kind of very low-cost model. Nothing that you require, some little medicine and you can start. A low-cost model which can be replicated in any other place, because now we've got the hang of what you need to do and how it goes. So this is something that we would like to share with persons who say there is nothing happening in my town, in my village, in my district. Nothing is happening. How do I start? This is one example. Uh, talking of uh, first aid, it remi uh, I'm reminded of very recently there was the BRICS conference in Goa. And uh, People for Animals was asked, please pick up all the dogs from there. We don't want all these dignitaries to have a very bad, poor 
um, poor uh, opinion of Goa. Well, these dignitaries are coming from places where there are dogs and, you know, they're just like us. They're all, uh, you know, what, what you call the South countries, nonetheless. Anyway, we obliged. We picked up the dogs at the airports and sort of on the main roads and so on, housed them all in our shelter. But amazingly, within a couple of days, we had people like taxi drivers and attendants and all kinds of persons coming to the shelter with patties, with small things for their favorite dogs. Where are you taking our dog? And my shelter manager tells me, I have to release them because they are saying, send them back, send them back because we have been looking after them. So here's an example of people whom you don't think care about animals, who actually make the effort. We are like five minutes away from the airport, so one too far who make the effort to come and feed a stray which they consider as their own. This is just an aside. Anyway, another example that I wanted to give you of a, a, a model was in Jaipur. Now, Jaipur had a couple of several NGOs. Jaipur also had activists doing their own thing. Somebody is putting water bowls out, somebody is having an education program, somebody is doing an ABC, somebody is doing something. And uh, we thought, let's try and get them together. But again, the idea is, what's a common platform? So we used, uh, uh, we took, a, we, I, I suppose they were called together, and by consensus, they arrived at a, a problem, which is that the chicken shops, which are slaughtering the chickens, are in horrible state for the chickens, for the surroundings, for human welfare, whatever. It was taken as a goal. Can we reform the slaughter such that there is a component of animal welfare introduced, which you know exists. Animals should not be slaughtered in front of the other and so on. There should not be blood and feces running all over the place and so on. And we used laws like pollution, like food and safety, got government officials whose job it is to en enforce those, but nobody does it, got the community around to say, yeah, yeah, they're, they're very stinking, really, we don't like it. So then, come and be part of this thing. We're not stopping you from eating your chicken if you want to eat it. But let us introduce proper standards. Monitoring came about. Authorities had to get involved. After all, if you send them a notice and say that there is a violation of so-and-so law, they can hardly say no. You tell them that there's animal cruelty, they might tell you, go home. But violation of human uh, laws which are set up by the state, they can't say no. So this is something that got going. And this is something that helped to bring the organizations together. Which then takes me to the last thing that I have to speak about, which is where is the animal, well, animal protection movement going? What are the issues before us? Where are we going? Do we have a movement? I don't know. I'm not entirely certain, but I think we certainly have started one. I think there are vast areas where there is no animal welfare, no knowledge of animal welfare still. But certainly, the movement has begun. And as it has begun, it has evolved already. We are no longer only looking at issues like cruelty to animals, rescue of animals, in a limited sense. Oh, this animal, I have to rescue. That's it. This animal met with an accident, I have to get it out. We're, not, we're no longer looking only at awareness in schools. I will do an awareness program. No, we have taken on many other things. We meaning, now I'm not talking about FIAPO, I'm talking about us, you and myself, and all the NGOs who are not here, who may or may not be part of the Federation. We are working on issues of law. We are working on issues of policy. I know HSI does work on policy. FIAPO does work on law. We're working on Cattle Registration Act. Vegan adv advocacy. Community protection. How do we get communities to protect animals? There is a significant growth of the movement solely because of the diversity of action. From just simply doing on-site treatment and rescue, we have moved into far greater and vast areas. 
Secondly, where do I see the movement? Isolation is reducing. Definitely, isolation is reducing. We no longer function only in our own areas. Formerly, we sent newsletters to one another. But now we have digital connectivity. That is one of the reasons why we are generally talking to each other all the time. But it's also reduced because we recognize that even if we are successful in our area, some judgment of another court in some other part can undo our work. And so we better get involved across the country wherever things which relate to cruelty are happening. Thirdly, I think we are recognizing that we do need training. If you want to do animal welfare, you don't simply get up one morning and say, okay, I'm going to start. You don't, you, you don't do that. You, you now need to be trained in some way. Your shelters need to be trained, persons need to be trained in how to deal with animal uh, issues. And as the diversity is increasing, the conflicts are increasing. It, one would think that now that we are advocating animal welfare, we should be having less conflicts. But no, there are more conflicts. But I see conflicts as a sign of growth. I see that conflicts means the world is taking us seriously. If a child throws a tantrum, you ignore it because you say he'll grow up. We won't have the same ideas later on. But when we protest, shout, scream, and so on, it means, and the world, and there are resident associations and, and various other oppositions, it means we are being taken seriously. So the Federation, FIAPO, is committed to being around for a long time. I know you are, and I think I can say with confidence, together we shall overcome. Thank you very much.